Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We came a long way. That's what the song say. And I could do all. Today, from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, this is Madden NFL 21. We'll see Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Tua Tungavailoa and the Miami Dolphins. Well, it wouldn't be Florida without this. A heavy tropical rainstorm coming down just prior to kickoff here in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, Everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction, the great Tom Brady. What I enjoyed this week is that you asked to talk to his offensive center before the game and find out a little bit more about him and what the relationship is. And that was a pretty positive story, wasn't it? Yeah, and really what I took away from that is just how it has permeated throughout the entire offensive line, the relationship they've had. It's really a group that's in sync. They care about him. That's the thing. They really care. And when you care that much, you're going to play that much harder for him and give him a better chance to lead the team to wins. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Throwing on second down, Brady. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Raekwon Davis. What an effort from him on that play. Big tackle for a loss of 11. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Shotgun now for Brady. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Shaquem Grant back deep for Miami. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And this one goes sailing out of bounds. Where did it cross? Well, they're going to say on this side of midfield. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, 
He's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering some snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Two and now on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And it's second down. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. 15 yards on the play, first down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Tua. Fuller brings it in over the middle. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. The touch and time are critical for those types of throws. He put a lot of zip on that one. Needed just a little bit more finesse trying to get it to his back. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Again, they will throw it with Tonga Bailoa. And this will be incomplete. Now they face a third and 10 after back-to-back -back incompletions. On play action, here's Tua. Now he's got it. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Dolphins are going to take a first-quarter lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stuff it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. That time, a six-play drive, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded right around the eight. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30.
Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll look to throw right away. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. They went three and out on their first drive. Things already looking better here, first and 10. And I put my first tally mark next to the Brady to Gronk counter here. I think it may be the first of many because once they get going, look out. Things tend to snowball. Tom Brady trusts Gronk as much as any receiver I think he's thrown to in his career. And it's evident and when you see that. that's saying something. That's saying something right there. But he's earned it. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front, they moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Jones and set up to throw toward the right sideline but it's incomplete you could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield but they had nothing working in the secondary so he dropped it off to the running back that one ended up incomplete now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down working from the gun it's Brady He's going deep for Brown. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Oh, well, Antonio Brown can wreak havoc in so many ways. Here he's able to cause a P.I. penalty. He runs at defensive backs with such speed and power. I think it creates panic on their end. And a lot of times they just reach out and grab him. And that's the result there, a pass interference call. So now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. To throw is Brady. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. 10 yards on the touchdown pass. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7 now as they kick it away. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. 
So Miami coming out for their second drive, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. He'll throw from the gun. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. From the gun, it's Tua. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and 10. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And that will be incomplete. Absolutely no disguise on that one. They just went for it. Put him out there and said, go deep. Let's try and hit him. Unfortunately, to no avail. So on fourth down, kicking it away here, Michael Pilardi. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Fair catch called for, no gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. It'll be called just a 22-yard punt, certainly not what he wanted. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. And Brady and the Buccaneers here, first and 10 at the 45. He'll set up to throw from the gun toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time. That'll bring up second down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. Brady will try again on second down, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. From the gun, it's Brady. Airing this one out for Evans. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And they'll get to this and down it inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Two and now on first down. Over the middle 
and it's incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And now it's second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Tua once again here on second and 10. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Kosicki. And now off to the races, down the right side. And he gets this down deep into Tampa Bay territory. Now after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. They try and run for it here with Brown. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. And he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. Five plays there on that drive, and it winds up in six points for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From the 10. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time out, they had to punt the football away. Anything positive possibly to take from that? There always is when, when you're punting the football away. It doesn't sound like it because you're giving it up. But you've avoided a mistake. At least you didn't turn it you over, You didn't I guess. turn it over, right? You're giving, it, you're giving your defense a chance because you're punting the ball away and they're set to go on the field as opposed to sudden change after a turnover. And Wow, now we've got to go out there and stop people. So, yeah, there's always something positive to be gained from it. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Out of the gun, he'll throw. He's got it complete to Gronkowski. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. I 
it's at by 20. Let's go, you tighten up. Let's go, you tighten up. My finish. From midfield, here's Brady. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Brady gives this one off to Jones. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Not a whole lot of room to maneuver there, and I think that's because everyone took care of their responsibilities, filled their gaps, held their place. No place for him to run. Yeah, it looked good. Everything got funneled to the nose tackle. They swallowed him up. And he's got an open man. It's Gronkowski. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. They'll run on first down. Jones. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Into the red zone, it's Brady. This is caught. And the Buccaneers are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They'll run here with Bernard. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. So stuck from the two, now what? You know me pretty well. What do you think I want here? Play action. Definitely. Let him get outside and create. And if he has to run it, he has a little bit more space. Second down and goal. Brady. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Emmanuel Ogba that time able to drop him for a loss. So they were stopped trying to run the ball on first down. Now they take a sack on second down. The offensive coordinator's got to find a way to flip the script on the defensive coordinator because right now the defense has the advantage. Third and goal. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And all the gamble fails. It's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. Miami set to take over. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Hey, hey, hey. On 
on first down, Tonga Bailoa. Got a man open, that's Devontae Parker complete. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Now a carry for Brown, and they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. A run there on first down and a pretty good one of five yards, so make it second and five. Through one corner, 14-7, our score. Here's second and five now from the 22. Tua sets up to pass it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. They go play action here on first down. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. 17 yards for the Dolphins there as they've got themselves a first down. just to the 47, one-yard gain. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep a defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Two are going to throw. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. William Golston. Credit him with a sack, and it goes as a loss of six. Tell you what, he did not have much time there to scan the field before he was ducking and covering. Did it appear to you, as it did to me, that the defensive front won their play really quickly, yeah. meaning the guys in front of them had almost no chance to block them? They were on him in a hurry. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Throwing right, and that's complete. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. There's another example what defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, 
And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Here's the Tampa Bay offense and Ronald Jones leading him out. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. From the gun, he'll set up to throw. It's complete to Brown, right side. That catch good for only a couple. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Snap comes at one, and it's Brady. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended target was Chris Godwin, and it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. The Bucks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and eight. Now Brady. And that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and it'll be Dolphin football. Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out, and he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. Two and now on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Three yards the game there, second down. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. And it's caught by Parker. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That gain on third down, good for 28. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. 
throwing now is Tagovailoa. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The 305-pound and Dominican Sue fighting the path to the QB there. And a play like that with how far he had to go to make that sack shows how athletic defensive ends have become in the NFL. And not just athletic. This is coached in a big way. Run to the football at all times. How about him never giving up on it and pursuing all the way across the field? They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. This is Gaskin on the carry. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 11. Someone moved, flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. Looking to pass, Tua. Escaping the pressure right. There he goes inside the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. Good work on the scamper by Tung of Iloa. It's a first down. With nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD. Got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Three yards the gain there, second down. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness, there's a premium for all of that now. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. From the gun, it's Tua. His throw caught at about the five. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Mike Gesicki on the pass from Tua Tung of Iloa. And the Dolphins add on to their lead. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. That three touchdown passes. You're right. He looks comfortable. What are they doing? Anything in particular? Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Sanders on for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to seven. So that drive goes eight plays, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. 
Back now comes Tampa Bay. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? But well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness, maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature, to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. On first down, Brady. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Here's Bernard. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. That's looking like another three and out here, and at some point, got to be able to put together a drive to keep your defense from having to go right back out on the field. I feel like things are starting to unravel a little bit, and we're not even at halftime. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And that will come the offense as they take over. To a tongue of Iloa in the offense heading back out. And how about the start so far, Charles? Three first-half touchdown passes. And that's how you generate excitement on a team, keep your offense moving at a really high level. And it's also how you establish leadership by playing that well. Three touchdown passes, that's the way to lead. Now he's just hoping for number four. Good starting field position for the Dolphins as they have it first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Here's Tua. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. He finds his target, Fuller. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. On first down, Brown. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Malcolm Brown, 36 yards. And the Dolphins are able to extend that advantage. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Sanders now to add the extra point.
He knocks it through. It's 28-7. A drive there of just four plays. And it was Malcolm Brown who ended it with a touchdown run. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. That's me, baby. Turn it up, turn it up. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more or I need to play better. Maybe even say, I put my defense in a bad spot. That's what true leadership shows you. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to change much personally. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 24. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Right and the ball right on the 30. Here's second and four. the gun it's Brady and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball but for the guys on the offensive line they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer but when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him that'll be a holding penalty so all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky Open man is Godwin. It's complete. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First down, Jones, and he's across midfield and into Miami territory. And I give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Mind you that coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will be alongside. He'll have highlights and analysis from Orlando of this first half of action. Brady's throw there complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 27-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. On first and 10, here's Brady. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Give the sack to Jerome Baker. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, 
Definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Shotgun now for Brady. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. On fourth down, Ryan Suckup now for the Buccaneer field goal. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now a look at Will Fuller as he and the rest of the offense gears up to get ready to go again. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate them. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Going to throw right side here, complete. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Now Tua. That's complete to his tight end, Mike Gesicki. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Let's just make this one simple. Could he be any more open than he was on that play? Yeah, they lost him going to the outside. Hard to believe because you go through your accounting on each and every defensive snap. Who's got who? What, what defense you're in? That was totally a blown coverage. And he fires one that's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it. And it's a pick six. He brings it back to the house for a Buccaneer TD. It goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. Suck up for the extra point. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Jakeem Grant now to return. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. 
Tua and the rest of the Dolphin offense heading back out. He does have the one interception, Charles, but I think that's been more than offset by the three first-half touchdown passes. I would agree with you. There is a blemish, but when you've thrown three touchdown passes to try and erase it, that's a little bit better than the ratio that all NFL coaches are seeking from their quarterbacks, and he's giving it to them. They'll take the three to one? Every single time. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Right Tongue of Iloa trying again after the pick six. Steps away to his left. And now he's going to use his legs. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. First down, Tonga Bailoa. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Here's Gaskin. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a very strong first half for our rookie quarterback. His three touchdown passes have his guys out in front as we hand things back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. This is Jakeem Grant. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively they defer to brown to start the drive there to stop him was carlton davis well they held him to a short gain on that one and it almost felt like on that first run they are trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Tua sets up to pass it. Now thrown to Parker, complete on the slant. Yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Let's go. 
They'll run now with Gaskin. And three yards there takes him to the 45. The way things have gone in this one, the running game's been something of an afterthought, and that's not been too bad for them, has it? Yeah, the offensive returns have been good, but I guess we figured he and the ground game would be a bit more involved. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll look to throw here. He'll look underneath and finds Brown. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And over the middle, this is Parker. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 31-yard line. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on the receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Two are going to throw. It's complete to Parker left side. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 14. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. On first down, Brown. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. They're going to look to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the nine-yard line. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. So on fourth down, Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. 
The kick by Sanders is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The spotlight now focuses on the quarterback, and that's Tom Brady. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Looking back to the air on second down, it's Brady. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. A gain there of 21 yards. Well, we know he has pretty good hands on display there. In fact, he only needed one of them. Yeah, and nowadays, all these receivers work on this, right? They do the one-handed catches off the machine in practice. They do it with their quarterbacks. They do it contested, uncontested. They make it part of their repertoire. Brady now on first down. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. So that'll back him up five. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Again, they'll throw with Brady. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second and a country mile. Another try after the first down sack. Brady, that's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, 
You really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. Only 29 yards on the punt there, definitely not his best. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal, added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because <laughs> someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Now a throw here to his running back. Not much there, only a yard. got a yard out of that last completion and that makes this second and nine from the gun it's Tua throwing over the middle but it's incomplete looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play and uh, who am I to say this but I'm not sure he made the right decision well the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL that's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. And that is incomplete. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Miami. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. So the punt rolls out of bounds, and they'll have pretty good field position here up near the 40-yard line. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 37. They'll begin here with Bernard. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. What's the deal, y'all? That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty. But it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Working from the gun, it's Brady. Over the middle, he finds Godwin complete. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Second down at four. From the gun, it's Brady. Letting one go deep here for Gronk. It's caught inside the 25. 
And he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line, just shy of the 20. It's a gain of 35. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well to get a few stops. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Jones. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just pin their ears back and get after him now. Second and eight coming from the 19. Now Brady. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, Brady. This into the hands of his running back, Ronald Jones. Had a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through, and that will close the gap down to 14. So he missed that field goal earlier, but he says not this time. Able to knock it through, give his guys three. I like his poise. I like his confidence, his belief in himself. Sometimes when you miss that first one, you see a lot of guys sag, and they can't make the next one. Not in this case. Stepped right up like a pro. The putter pinion now to kick this one away. The return man is Grant. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? They'll run on first down. It's Brown, and he'll work this one up to about the 38. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down. Get to the fourth quarter. Try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports.
The Dolphins on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for ten. Here it's third and two. Here's Brown. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. Tua now on first down. Going right side here, and that's complete. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they've passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? In this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Well, he's got to be careful with this game where it is, Charles, throwing those out patterns, right? You're exactly right, because this is why we always hear teams say, Late in the game, you're trying to close things out. You'll work the middle of the field more than the outside portion because if you throw one out there that hangs a little bit or you float it, it can be picked off and returned for a touchdown. And boy, what a dramatic turn of events that would be. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and ten. Looking to pass to a Got an open man, it's Washington. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Miami. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Shotgun now for Brady. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. To throw is Brady. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores, and they've really got to get some yards in chunks, and they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate, as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Brady now to throw. On the screen, Bernard. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Brady's throw there complete and brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him, and he makes another nice play. Back-to-back -back catches. On first down, Brady. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. The end result, 21 yards. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 34. Brady to throw again. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again, Brady. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying... No more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Caught on the right side by Jones. Nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage? Okay. Yeah, in this case. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there. Second down. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Tua to try again on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. 
Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit, but get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. He'll look underneath and finds Brown. And he gets this inside the 35 yard line. That's how you get fired up, baby. That's how you get fired out of here, man. Well, they're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty is not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. The penalty moves him into the red zone here on first and 10. They'll run now with Brown. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Tackle made that time by Vito Vea. Coming up on a second and six. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. Dancing to his left. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Eight yards that time, able to take off, and the result is a first down. We've seen the pressure get to him several times in this game. There, though, we see him escaping. And we've seen this rookie video before as well. That type of pressure. Oftentimes, what do you resort to? Your legs, try and escape. What you hope is that this doesn't become habit for him, that he learns how to handle the pressure, still keep his eyes downfield, and make some throws. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Now they'll throw with Tungabailoa. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. And Dominican Sue picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. This is Brown, and he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. They do get six, but they've still got some work to do on third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Third and goal, the ball at the 10. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Vita Vea breaking through to get the sack. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead.
So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. This to make it a three-score game late. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So with that, you figure yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down, but don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 27. He'll set up the throw from the gun. He drops it off for Bernard. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Brady now on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Brady going to find Jones here out of the backfield. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Brady looking to throw on third and two. He's got Evans. And he is going to have a box first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Brady to Evans that time. First down, Tampa. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Now they got to get to the line quickly. To try again after the sack. Brady. It's caught inside the 25. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 22-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. Easy. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Brady now on first down. That is caught at the seven. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. 
Working from the gun, it's Brady. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Eric Rowe. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Tampa.